But in addition to the public ministry of Jesus, the next thing we find sandwiched in between the description of his preaching in 17, the general <coughs> summary of his public ministry in 23, are these verses 18 to 22, where he starts calling some disciples <coughs> to follow him. Now we've already seen that he, this is not the first introduction to him in the light of John chapter 1 that we looked at last night. <coughs> saw that Jesus already had some introduction. John the Baptist introduced Andrew to Jesus and John, and then uh, Andrew goes and gets Peter, and we assume John went and got James. So these guys have had some connection with Jesus uh, earlier. Now, as Jesus uh, comes and sees them fishing, that was their business, he uh, calls them, says to them, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Interesting how it is Jesus uses language that touches people where they are. <laughs> he didn't say, come follow me, I'll help you build the kingdom of God. They were fishermen, so he used categories that were understandable in, uh, for, them, for them. And uh, said, if you follow me, I'm going to use you to do something with your life. And it'll be like catching men, drawing people to God so God can do some things for them. Very interesting argument. And because they already gotten acquainted with Jesus, now this invitation to follow him, immediately they left their nets and followed him. And then he comes to James and John, and the same thing, he called them, and they left the boat that father and followed him. That's part of what we want to be doing, of course, as a part of making disciples. Challenging people to follow Jesus in another wholehearted kind of way. Not just coming to an experience of saving grace, but a follow, an intense following of Jesus in this way. Now, uh, in the world in which uh, these folks lived, uh, rabbis often had a group of disciples around them that they were teaching and training so that they could do the work of a rabbi at some future time. So this isn't a foreign concept, not near as foreign as it would be to some in our culture, but it was a, a regular occurrence for them. So when they were called by Jesus, uh, they say that's the kind of thing we believe we want to be a part of. And we're attracted to this Jesus, want to be connected with him. Now, <clears throat> notice, in choosing to follow Jesus, these guys are making Jesus more important than three particular things. Jesus was more important than their possessions. They leave their nets and their boats in order to follow Jesus as a disciple. One of the questions for us as serious disciples, is Jesus more important than our possessions? Is he more important than our homes? <coughs> our cars? Or our bank account? Or anything else we want? The disciple means Jesus becomes important. Sometimes he asks us to dispose of those possessions so we can do something else. Sometimes he just wants to be in charge of how those are used. But we've got to give them to him. So they're his, not ours. Second thing we notice here is that uh, these guys decide following Jesus is more important than their work. So they leave what they had done as an occupation in order to start following Jesus and keep on following. This is true for everybody, but it's particularly true of guys. Because God made us for work. So what we are doing with our work is pretty important to all of us. The question is, is Jesus more important than the work we are doing? You may want to change the work we're in. 
or you may want to use this in the work we're already doing. The question is, is something as important as what we are giving our lives to, uh, can we give that to Jesus? That's what he's asking for this. So, Jesus is saying, I want to be more important than your possessions. I want to be more important than your work. And then the third thing is, Jesus wants to be a priority even of our family. Here he calls James and John, who leave their father Zebedee, in order to follow Jesus. Now, some parts of our family, like fathers and mothers, Jesus may ask us to leave them to do, be able to do the work. Sometimes our family, our wives and husbands and children, we are responsible for them. You don't walk away from them. The point here is, is Jesus more important than the most important people in our lives? That's how serious he wants us to be. He wants to be more important in my life than Beth is, or my four kids and their wives and their children. If he's more important than they are, then he'll take care of them. And he will certainly give me more intense interest in them and their well-being than I would have been otherwise. So he's not asking us to neglect them, but he's saying, where are the priorities here? And am I in charge? And to be a follower of, a disciple as a follower of me, I want to be important, more important than these folks are to you here. <clears throat> now, we look at this group of uh, people, I want you to notice some characteristics that stand out about uh, these four guys here that Jesus calls at this particular time. He's just starting the group, the whole group isn't listed here, but these four are. What do we, what do we discover about these men? <clears throat> First thing we're impressed with is that they're working men. They are commercial fishermen. <clears throat> and uh, that was not a, a penny waste occupation. <laughs> these guys fished with these great big bell nets that had weights on them. You folded them in a way, and then you took the net and swung the thing around, threw it out, so the net landed, and then the weights on all sides of it were what brought it down came down and caught any fish in the middle. If, if you threw out a net with no weights on it, it just spread out flat. But with the weights on it, it it's what caught the fish, and uh, then when the fish were in there, of course, if we had a rope to it, then you hauled it back in. <clears throat> but what, what I don't want you to miss seeing is, these guys are swinging weights all day long. So we, we, we got some guys, probably pretty sizable guys, because the because of what their job was. <coughs> and uh, so, so they're working. Now, Jesus is not going to require everybody to be a weightlifter here in order to be a disciple. <laughs> uh, <coughs> the point I'm trying to make is these are working men <coughs> who are going to shift where they work and how they work from something that just earns a living for themselves to what God wants to do with their life. They didn't stop working when they got connected as a disciple of Jesus. They're just working on a different basis. And that's maybe true for all of us. Second thing we notice here is that these guys uh, have relationships. Not only family relationships like James and John had with their father, but they're two sets of brothers. So uh, Peter and Andrew... Uh, have a good close relationship. James and John have a close relationship. And we find out later in the gospel, these guys are partners in the fishing business. They work together. So they learn something about being related to guys as a part of their life and their work. <clears throat> but that's not something Jesus is going to dismiss. It's something he's going to transform. going to say, I want you working together with other disciples. Now for my purposes. Not just for the making of money, but for kingdom business. 
for really big business? Are we willing to work and build those relationships? And uh, as you know, relationships don't just happen. They take time and energy and some thought, both to build them and to maintain them. Now, yeah. if what Jesus is doing becomes a model for his own disciples, it means there's a, a combination of things that he wants us to be involved in. A combination of public ministry, calling it private ministry, really it's discipleship ministry. <laughs> uh, those things, it's not an either or matter, they are interwoven. So that for the rest of the gospel story, Jesus stands up to preach to a crowd of folks and disciples are standing around listening as well. Jesus feeds the 5,000 like he does say in John chapter 6. The disciples are there to read it, help him serve. So that there's a careful weaving together of what he does. Or he spends all day teaching and then healing people until he's exhausted. Then he withdraws for some food and some, right? but the disciples are still there. So this complementariness and interweaving is part of the way God works. And you've got to look for ways to do both things together. One of the best things is if you have any, any kind of public ministry, teaching a Sunday school class or involved in some music ministry or uh, some service kind of thing, uh, the folks you're involved with in discipleship say, come uh, with me while I'm doing this. And to start with, just invite them to come and be with you. And then after a while, you might give them some tasks to do in the process. But they see you working and you do things together. That complementary in this is, is going to help grow. So we want to keep working and uh, working together to make all these things happen.